Sahabiryam karavavahai Tejasvi navatiramastu Mavidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Today we'll be doing some Yoga Sutras commentaries from Patanjali out of this book, The Science of Self-Realization by Roy Jean Davis. Carolina will be reading the verses first in Spanish and then I'll give English commentaries. First I wanted to give a brief introduction of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. It's a text from ancient India, really about 2,000 years old, and Patanjali was a scholar and a yogi um, in India, and he was commissioned or asked to combine and uh, accumulate all of the known knowledge on yoga philosophy at the time and put it all in one short, succinct, clear text to be used by uh, royal families and sages and yogis uh, for the teaching of yoga. There were six schools of ancient Indian philosophy at the time, Samkhya, Vedanta, Yoga, etc. And so yoga was one of those schools. And the, they were the six orthodox schools. There were also two unorthodox schools, Buddhism and Jainism. And really the Yoga Sutras was written in response to uh, some of these other philosophies, particularly, we think, uh, Buddhism, which was very popular at the time in India. Yoga had lost some of its popularity at the time, and so this was sort of a, a response to the different philosophical systems of the day, although it does contain some of the Samkhya philosophy as well, with the three gunas and whatnot. It's, it's a short text. It's 196 verses. Each verse is full of uh, deep, profound meaning and symbolism at times. And so this text was meant to be taught by someone that had been taught the text by someone that has experienced what's in the text, the teachings of Patanjali, and so on and so forth. So it goes back to a, a lineage of <clears throat> teachers. And it's meant to be unpacked by someone that is knowledgeable about the practices of yoga and what can be experienced through these practices. And so, in other words, it's an outline meant to be unpacked by a teacher. And Roy Eugene Davis was taught the Yoga Sutras by Paramahansa Yogananda in the Kriya Yoga tradition, who was taught the Yoga Sutras by Sri Yukteswar, who was taught the Yoga Sutras by Lahiri Masaya. And so there's a clear, distinct lineage of teachers in the Kriya Yoga tradition we are disciples of Roy Eugene Davis, um, and he's written a, a commentary called The Science of Self-Realization, and it's been translated into Spanish. Capitulo 1 is about samadhi, um, or oneness consciousness, and so that's where Patanjali, Patanjali starts. Capitulo 1. Samadhi. Los estados superconscientes y cómo experimentarlos. Ahora empieza la instrucción en yoga de acuerdo con una tradición establecida. Comentario de Roy Eugene Davis. La palabra ahora indica un tiempo auspicioso para enseñar aquellos buscadores receptivos al aprendizaje de la verdad. En este texto, yoga 
generalmente significa samadhi, el acto de incorporar completamente la atención y la conciencia al objeto de contemplación. El samadhi superconsciente es superior a los estados de conciencia ordinarios, nublados y fragmentados. La referencia a una tradición establecida indica que lo que se describe es un conocimiento útil experimentado por otros. So the word now contains a little bit of symbolism and it, do, it indicates an auspicious time to begin learning yoga because yoga happens in the present moment and the now. Yoga doesn't happen in the past, it doesn't happen in the future because the past and future don't exist. So yoga is now. It's in the present. Roy says in his commentary, uh, buscadores receptivas, this is important. Without uh, this energy of receptivity, it's impossible to learn or gain anything from the teachings, from reading divine scripture, uh, from gurus. One must be receptive to these teachings in order to learn or gain anything from them. He also says, una tradición establecida, an established tradition. This is important. Like I said in the introduction, it, it's, there's a transmission of consciousness that occurs in a lineage of teachers and a lineage of gurus. Otherwise, it's just words on a, a page or empty words coming from someone's mouth. There's nothing behind it. There's no experience or knowledge or wisdom contained in the words. They're just empty, hollow words. Like when someone says, I love you, but they don't really, they don't mean it. It's the same thing here. So it's important that people that teach the Yoga Sutras or teach yoga and meditation in general, it's important that they're part of an established tradition of masters of the enlightened gurus. Uh, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, it's literally a transmission of consciousness. Verso 2 Se experimenta Samadhi cuando las fluctuaciones y cambios en la conciencia del meditador se aquietan y controlan. Comentario Este sutra, en sánscrito, Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda, Describe los pasos específicos por medio de los cuales se realiza el objetivo de la práctica. Samadhi resulta cuando los movimientos y cambios brittis en la conciencia individualizada, chitta, se debilitan, aquietan y se hacen inactivos, niroja. So throughout classical yogic texts, and, and Patanjali as well, yoga and samadhi are synonymous. They have the same meaning. Later on, yoga, especially in our modern world, uh, yoga is typically thought of as just a physical exercise routine you do in a gym or a yoga studio. Um, but classically, yoga had the same exact meaning as samadhi, which is... Uh, the unification or union of the seeker's or the meditator's consciousness with infinite consciousness. Really, a more precise definition is the union of our attention and awareness with infinite consciousness. We are always at one with infinite consciousness. We simply aren't aware of it. During samadhi, we become aware of this unity that always exists, it's always there. So really it's the unification or the union of our attention and awareness with our true nature, which is infinite or pure consciousness. Typically, 
um, translated as unbounded consciousness, which I really uh, prefer. And this verse in Sanskrit, Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodha, is the most important uh, verse in any yoga text throughout the history of yoga. And it means that samadhi occurs when the fluctuations of the mind and the being really cease. So yoga or samadhi, they're synonyms, occurs or happens when the fluctuations or uh, vrittis, waves, uh, cease. Chitta here is uh, defined as, as mind. Vrittis are waves or fluctuations within the consciousness, within our being, that must be stilled in order to experience oneness, consciousness, or samadhi, or yoga, union. Yoga uh, comes from uh, an older Sanskrit term that, that means to yoke or to unite. And so yoga, even in uh, the Vedas, was used, not strictly in this sense, but just as a word that meant union of something, unification, to unite. Nirodha here means uh, to, to cease, to calm, to pacify. And so samadhi takes place or occurs when uh, all is still. You know, it says in the Bible, for example, um, that you, you will know God in the stillness. But it doesn't give you techniques to experience the stillness. And this is what yoga promises. Yoga is a scientific process of awakening. It's a, it's a scientific process of techniques that allow you to experience this union and this unification. And this is really the foundational text that outlines the process and the step-by-step -step, uh, techniques that we must use if we want to experience samadhi, if we want to experience our true nature. In doing so, we eliminate our spiritual ignorance and suffering. Verso 3. El buscador entonces conscientemente permanece en su propia naturaleza. Comentario. El buscador es la autoidentidad del meditador que percibe lo que observa y experimenta. Cuando cesan los cambios como olas y transformaciones, que ordinariamente ocurren en la mente y la conciencia, prevalece entonces la autorrealización, experiencia consciente junto con el conocimiento de la esencia del ser. When the seeker or the meditator experiences samadhi, they are said to experience their true nature or their highest self and Typically, uh, in yoga, we use a capital S to denote the true self, um, the soul, the Atman, in Sanskrit, Atman, in Spanish, Alma. It's the same word, or it's, it's different words for the same exact concept. And so samadhi, oneness, is our, our true nature. We are always at one with the divine. There's only one thing in, in reality. But during our normal day-to-day -day life, our consciousness is fragmented. And we ignorantly believe ourselves to be this body, or this mind, or these thoughts, or the emotions and reactions that we experience our memories, our desires, our personality, our likes, our dislikes, our identity. Um, all of these things are impermanent and fleeting. When the body dies, 
all of these things die with it. Likewise, all of these things are constantly changing. From one moment to the next, from one day to the next, one year to the next, so on and so forth. So it becomes evident through meditation, through seeking, through the reading of uh, divinely inspired scriptures, through the presence of the Guru, that we are far more than a body or a mind or a personality that dies. In deep meditation, we can observe objectively our thoughts, our desires, the fluctuations, the vrittis, the waves of the mind, of the being, and understand that if we can observe all those things, then we must be, in fact, this observer or witness. I am the way. I am the ocean. No. I am the way. I am the ocean. No. I am the I am the ocean known. Certain is my grace. Is my grace. Oneness is the potion known. 